as they sent here from the quest, uh, moving into uh, my Thailand trip number three in the series. Uh, this one's a little different. Um, I really got to say something about this. Uh, now that I'm kind of out of the dark, well, sort of. Uh, I met with some of the the nuns, and they showed me these little girls who sell flowers, uh, and they had bruises all up and down their arms and their legs uh, because they're owned by gangs and the mafia there. They, they force them to sell flowers. Uh, also they have, which I'll ha include a picture, uh, they have like these mothers with fake children and they drug the kid really bad so uh, they're not really conscious uh, and they put the mother on the street with the kid laying on them and they beg for money and all this money goes to the, the mafia. Uh, Get back I'll tell their stories for now I want to tell you that we saved six girls and two boys uh, but the fake mothers were too scared to come with us I don't think uh, I take them that that and you know when I when I take them uh, that makes me a criminal maybe people hate me for this uh, maybe not I really don't care uh, these are little people our, you know, it's our future, right? Uh, no one, not even an animal, should be treated this way. Am I wrong? Comment if you want. Uh, anyway, day 13, uh, crossing borders again. Uh, while we were doing so, uh, and heading towards our destination, three times we found kids being transported to brothels. Uh, two of them Two of the three, uh, we were able to negotiate a price. Two of the girls for $75, four girls for $200. Uh, and then the th uh, third, uh, then three girls that we liberated. So far on this trip, we've saved like 103 kids. Uh, but these, this is real typical. And if you've seen some of my other uh, videos or read my reports, this is kind of typical and as they transport them usually uh, from Vietnam into Cambodia or into Thailand um, and it's real obvious uh, but uh, generally we can actually make a deal and purchase them because they'll just turn around and go back and get more kids um, you know unless they don't want to cooperate with us and then we take their vehicle so or liberate it however you want to put it so Here's how it went uh, about what I just mentioned. Uh, while recovering in the pagoda, uh, some of the nun nuns informed me that there was something that they wanted to show me. It was evening and we took transport uh, to areas where the tourists are present. We walked around and they just told me uh, to look. I saw a person that was sitting on the ground and people passing by I approached and saw it was a very dirty uh, woman with a child laying limp on her lap. She had a can in front of her uh, wanting money. She was, I guess, in her mid-twenties and the child was about five or six. Uh, just limp, in underwear and a t-shirt. I backed off and returned to the nuns and I asked why they wanted me to see this. That was when they told me what I really saw. They said that the woman and child was owned by local gangs to sit there and with the child to collect money. That the child was drugged and would not move all night. We walked around the area and we found about five of these women and children all the same. We continued and one of the nuns grabbed my arm and asked what else did I see. I was so focused on the women and children that I saw nothing else. It reminds me of when I first discovered child sex trafficking. Mind not seeing the same over and over, like my mind would not accept. 
the nun slapped me and turned me to see a blind uh, teen boy that I had just passed in that scene. He was singing and holding a cup for money. The nuns told me that two was one who was owned by the gangs, that this one too was owned by the gangs. They deformed kids and sent them out to make money for them. I walk now leaving the nuns behind. I went to one of these women with a child and put $10 and walked away before the emotion got me. I just kept walking, but soon the nuns caught up to me. I stopped and they all had water in their eyes, uh, so I looked down. They told me they weren't done with me, I asked why. Uh, they did not answer. We went to some of the areas where they had live music, many street restaurants. Uh, they were selling both local and western food. There was also much beer and ice cream. They took me to a table and we sat. I did not see anything but what you would expect. Many tourists just sitting there eating, drinking, having a good time. The nuns pointed out a little girl about 10 years old selling flowers. So I just looked and I did not see anything but what was. The girl was clean and seemed dressed normal. I continued to watch and noticed that she did not seem like to like her job and did not smile even when she sold some. I asked the nun what I was supposed to see and she said wait till she comes here. In a few minutes she came near us but seemed to look and then pass. I think because she saw the nuns with me. I yelled over to her and she came back. She looked down and asked if I wanted to buy flowers. I reached in my pocket to get some money and gave it to her. As she reached out, the nun grabbed her arm and showed me. It was full of bruises, and not just little ones, but you could see like fingerprints on her arms. The girl looked up at me and there was also bruising on her neck and face and marks on it. She pulled away and ran from us. Then the nun took, uh, looked at me with those watery eyes. I asked the nun if we were done yet, and she nodded. We found transportation and went back to the potato. I went to my room and I could not even smoke. Uh, she was, it was like my discovery years ago in child trafficking. Those memories haunted, haunted me to this day. Now I have new haunts. I really did not sleep all night, and the monks uh, made a lot of noise in the morning while trying to be quiet. One of my teammates, uh, teammates, G.I. Jane, showed up all smiles and ready to see what we were going to do next. Through all this, what, uh, what, through all of this, what we do, we do all love each other and we are always happy to be with each other. It is all uh, we have in, in this darkness. Sometimes I wonder if what it would be like uh, to have time just to be with my big family. But it is sort of how things just are. She noticed how crappy I, I was and knew something was up. Uh, she thought it had something to do with my injuries. Then I could see her translate the emotion into my eyes and uh, sat without saying anything. She knew I was going to tell her something. She did not, she, she did not want to hear. What many uh, don't understand is when you work in a job where it is life or death, that you start to become each other. So I looked at her and I told her about my walk with the nuns last night and and one of those oh my god moments. It's like everyone in these places. You just see and not think about the rest of the story. Then when someone tells you what you already know, 
I told her uh, we need to do something, even if it's just a short mission, before we continue with what we had started. She got up and told me she would get some of the others uh, that were nearby and we would gather later. While she was gone, I came up with a plan and informed the nuns. They agreed they, uh, and would take care of the aftercare. One of the renegade nuns uh, I selected because of her attitude uh, as a hardcore went with me side by side and made sure the girls were targeted were truly slaves. In reality, all the kids here uh, are, but we had to be sure. The nuns already identified and confirmed with detail. They knew the story uh, with the parents or guardian. It was not much different than the girls that we find in the brothels. Also, the mothers uh, with the young boys. More on that later. Uh, we had transport uh, follow us with nuns aboard and each uh, had some of our teammates. The plan was to get as many as possible as quickly as possible. We wanted to send a message and hurt the owners of these kids. This all came out of the blue, uh, yet rather than moving on with our previous plans, we had at least to do something. I uh, had time because I was healing, so we used that time to do this now. We knew that the places the girls sold flowers were both in a square. The restaurants were around and some in the middle uh, with table seating throughout and with uh, one at the end main stage where most were looking. The team would surround the girl at a distance to watch out for any of the owners of the girls. The nuns would approach the girl as not to alarm them and I would be a short distance behind and follow as the nun would tell the girl uh, she had somewhere, someone around the corner that wanted to buy all her flowers. The girl was young and did not know any better, but uh, that her owner may not beat her this night. These girls like are like brothel uh, girls live in fear and would do what they needed to keep the owner happy so they were not as uh, much of, of a flea risk and that were as monitored. All went as planned but after we had the girl in the transport and comp as much as possible, we noticed that there were uh, two other girls doing the same thing. The nun said that is not normal and to have so many girls selling flowers at one location at the same time. The girl told the nun uh, it was a special event tonight and that is why. This took us off guard uh, that the little girl just volunteered this information, but we did not have time to think more about it. One of the female teammates stayed, and the girl seemed okay with that. We were all dressed normal, so maybe that helped. We repeated this with both the other girls. Only one was really scared. All were scared, but the one uh, was a, a concern to us and we found out later once safe if there was any more to her story. The nun explained what was happening to each and made sure they understood what was happening and would show them and tell them more once we had them safe. The nuns are scary to all kids. It is a good scare if you can understand me. So they left with the escort and dropped me near the next location. This one was much busier and that was only good for us. We did the same here with the same results. We are a bit surprised that we had plans for a total of two girls and ended up with a total of six. Uh, with two other teammates, we walked around and I showed them the mother and child that were sitting on a street uh, that I explained what it really was. They had been told before we left this night, but now they were seeing it. With this uh, new knowledge, there was about, there was two that were not far apart. 
We watched till our transport returned and some more teammates. By now we had our female teammates sit with the mothers and talk to them and give them mon some money and ask if they would come with us. They both refused and both had been looking away when we were making offer to, of saving them. Both had a little boy laying on them. Others in our team had, identi uh, had identified who the mothers were uh, looking at. So we knew uh, where they were, the gang members. We knew uh, there could be more, but we, hand uh, but we would handle that as it came. We decided to go after both at the same time. We would make it as casual, casual as we could, but as to not to cause any commotion. We waited till both were in heavily uh, tourist uh, foot traffic, and then the teammates moved in on the lookouts to distract them and keep them busy. Once they, we were in on place, the other teammates got closer to the two separate mothers to watch for more lookouts. Our transports blended in with the local taxis, uh, so that was not a problem at all. The female teammates moved in and told the mothers we would rescue them and all they had to do is go with us. Both refused and you could see the fear was not of us but of the lookouts. It was starting to take time and neither would budge. The, the boys were both heavily drugged and I radioed them uh, to take the boys and the transport. There was little resistance uh, from the fake mothers and teammates carried the boys to the transport and were gone on way to safety. I had two teammates stay with me and watch that the fake mothers, what the fake mothers did. They seemed to keep looking around and keep begging for money. I could not do anything more and it made us really try to think what else could we could do, but there really was nothing short of a small war. People everywhere not aware, police and so on, and but we did get the kids. So we ended up at this time and returned, ended it at this time and returned to our kids from this night. When they got back, the girls were doing fine and had been cleaned and dressed with new clothes. They seemed to be relieved and of course were hungry. The nuns told them that this would happen to them now and what would happen to them now and they looked comfortable with that. The nuns would uh, take the next steps in checking the kids out mentally and physically and take care of any problems while investigating their parents for return or relocation uh, or if they would be placed with surrogate parents or orphanages. The boys were a different story. They were really heavily drugged and it seemed uh, it was a regular thing. They were addicted and would need more medical attention. This was taken care of by the nuns, uh, the ones that had this experience. By the time I was heading back to the USA, they told me it was uh, tough going, but the nuns had it under control and were moving through the withdrawal process. They would continue care after they had been healed. This was all new to us, and it seems there's no way of human trafficking that is not a crime against humanity. We are now all aware and will continue this fight with new knowledge. I will also continue to educate anyone who wants to hear or help. That is our purpose here at the Quest, expose this crime and bring about awareness. Even if it is just small numbers we have, or if one day it is big enough for the masses to hear. That is our goal, for the masses to hear, and I know in my heart that if people see it, they will not be able to continue to ignore this. Crime against humanity, and that, and when that happens, it will be the end to human traffic.